Alright guys, thank you for checking in on Stormtopia.com and the Stormtopia.com Facebook page. We're going to have our daily weather update right now. And here you can see the northeast radar imagery showing that we do have a retrograding low pressure center right now east of Long Island, south of Cape Cod. And what's happened here is we saw one main band of rain move across New England and into the eastern mid-Atlantic and northern mid-Atlantic earlier this morning. We did have mixed precipitation, sleet, snow, and ice as far southward as Long Island in a very... Uh, pleasing first winter precipitation in the first week of November, hopefully the first of many. Now, I'm going to take you out to the NAM here by the time we make our way out to Tuesday. Now, what do you notice? All right, let's see. This is the NAM by Tuesday. Very warm across the eastern two-thirds of the nation with a southerly flow. However, it's cooler with storms coming in in the west. That's cool. You say, Nick, okay. Well, what's that mean? Well, it means that what essentially I just mentioned, warm in the east, storm and cold in the west. But uh, in between these two, because this is obviously a rapidly changed climate, we got instability forming in the Rockies. So we're going to see, well, not instability, but kind of a clash of uh, clash of the titans, warm and cold air. So we got mixed precipitation, including snow and rain, moving up through the Rockies through the day on Tuesday and through the day on Wednesday. Likely to be rain for most of the plains and uh, western Midwest, and possibly rain for the eastern for the western Dakotas into Montana. It's going to move up as a more organized uh, 1,000 millibar low into Canada. Perhaps some heavier snows on the backside for North Dakota early in the morning on Thursday. Now, for Thursday itself, it looks like a number of things are going to be at play. Uh, we're returning to a more tranquil uh, weather spout spot. Very short period of tranquil weather for the west because before we get another storm in. Still nice, warm, and quiet for the east. We got a couple of rain showers forming in the south central, but that's not what captivates my attention. What captivates my attention is yet another clash of cold and warm air. In between Thursday night into Friday morning, we're seeing heavy rain moving through the southern plains as a storm begins to develop, the one I've been talking about for the last few days. Now, with this cold air, there could be some snow on the backside for western southern plains, areas like western Kansas, northern Texas, the panhandle of Oklahoma. But what really determines how much wintry precipitation falls, and I'm going to get to this in a second, is the track of the storm system, as the low pressure center at this frame is relatively spread out, but it will become more singular as it moves northeast. We can see here as we go through time, as kind of both bands of rain separate on either side, the low pressure center kind of deepens itself into a 110 millibar low, which is really not that impressive, moves one of two tracks, either close to Milwaukee or close to Chicago, or maybe a bit on either side, north or south. Now, here's the deal. Right now, I think our main target area is the Midwest, because here's what happens for the Southern Plains. We're pretty sure these areas get rain. Looks like brief heavy snow on the backside for the western areas. It will be wet snow on the backside for the western areas. Now, here's what's interesting. By next weekend, what happens across the Midwest? I told you it's all dependent on track, and Right now, guess what the models don't agree on? Track! Okay, here's the GFS. Brings it in a southerly track. Right over, right southeast of Chicago, right near Fort Wayne. Take a look at the DJX model. Brings it much further north, and it brings it over the Milwaukee area. Now you think, well, a north track should mean that the snow should, s should remain north. But that's actually not true. Look at the DJX. It has way more snow for the Midwest than the GFS. It also has the snow a bit heavier. Why is that? Well, here's the deal. We've got our supply of cold air across the northern plains in the western Midwest. We've got our low pressure center that comes through. What essentially ends up materializing is that if that low pressure center is south of that mother load of cold air, then it won't drag that much cold air in. If it is north or hint, hint, nudge nudge inside the cold air then it would theoretically and probably realistically drag in more cold air meaning that more folks in the midwest are able to change to snow and how is that cold air dragged in not much on the south side more on the north side all about track which is to be determined as these models continue to try to figure out this really trickster of a storm we'll have to see what ends up materializing before I end this video I know you weather geeks who will watch this video, you love to do it. You look into the fantasy land of the GFS. What is the fantasy land? Well, fantasy land is GFS storms in the longer range that are possible 
but unlikely. Okay. Snows in Jamaica. There's a 929 millibar low off the East Coast. Could it happen? Sure. Will it probably happen? No, but it's always getting shown on the GFS. GFS likes to really blows these storms up in the long range. Let's take a look at one of the blown up storms. Just this, this is for fun, not forecasting purposes. Has a blizzard across the Midwest. A blizzard across the Great Lakes. And a blizzard across northern New England. Let's just say, let's think realistically here. Has this been shown in November on the GFS before? Has it happened on the in November before? Has the GFS nailed it? Yeah. Does it, does it get shown at least once every year on the GFS for November? Yeah, probably. Does it almost never verify? Yeah, probably. And since this is 300 plus hours out, probably won't verify. And then behind it, of course, Armageddon comes. The entire U.S. just freezes over. It's the day after tomorrow. And really, uh, just fantasy land here. I mean, we keep reverting to this whole fantasy land concept whenever we see this kind of thing on the long-range GFS. But hey, I hope you enjoy these models. I hope you really just enjoy the whole thing and, uh, can't copy Joe Bastardi right here. So, thanks for checking in at Stormtopia.com. Please spread the word about our website. Also, make sure you have a great day. Six minutes and 30 seconds.